Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. Happy Monday. I can't believe it's ready the 12th of December. If you guys don't know, Puffy, a.k.a. Sean Diddy Combs, he took to social media Saturday morning to announce and welcome the birth of his new child. So Diddy takes to Instagram and he says, I'm so blessed to welcome my baby girl. Love Sean Combs to the world. Mama Combs, Quincy, Justin, Christian, Chance, Delilah, Jesse, and myself. I love you so much. God is the greatest. So this caused a lot of controversy. People were like, uh, we don't recall Carisha being pregnant. Um, does he mean his grandchild? What child? What is he talking about? Then we find out the child was born in October. So the child has been here for a while. And so everybody's been talking about this on social media. I had a feeling that the baby's mother was going to be Asian. And I'll show you guys that later. Um, so anyways, it was announced today that, you know, the social media sleuths found out Diddy's new baby's mother. Basically, the baby was born October 15th in Newport Beach, California. Diddy is listed as the father and the mother is a 28 year old woman named Dana Tran. OK, on top of that, they're saying that Dana works in the cybersecurity industry and she's a South Cal native. And so I had a feeling if it wasn't Dana, it was one of the Asian girls that Diddy is always spotted with or that has claimed Diddy over the past year. So I wrote this. I said, I knew it was Dana. She wasted no time hustling and positioning herself and her community. Her and her Blasian baby will come up off of Brother Black Love, Brother Black Economics, Brother Building Black Generational Wealth. Congratulations, Brother Clown. So y'all know I'm not a fan of Diddy. And like I tell you guys all the time, I don't care who you guys are fans of. That's between you and that celebrity. I don't have to like or support anybody that you support. So let me make that clear for people because there was a few people in their feelings and I told them to go ahead and unfollow. You don't have to follow my Instagram page. Go follow the shade room. So this is my thing and this is why I'm bringing this up. I have nothing against interracial dating. You guys know this. I have nothing against the fact that she's Asian. My issue is that Diddy has been on this pro-black kick for the past two years, okay? Let's keep that real because it seems like social media has such a short memory. In 2020, Diddy released a letter to corporate America. He was basically saying that corporate America is no longer able to manipulate the culture. And he was saying that he's tired of corporate America not really supporting black empowerment. And he wrote this whole letter on top of that, let's also not forget, in that same year, he also spoke out and he slammed the industry for their lack of investment in black enterprises. That's when he was really trying to get revolt, you know, just really getting off the ground. And he felt like he was not getting enough support with his revolt television. And then let's not forget in 2020, Diddy started a political party to empower black Americans where he wanted Trump out of office. And he even did a whole sit down with Charlemagne the God where he talked about black empowerment and the black family and things like that. And, you know, putting together a black political party. Y'all go ahead and check out this snippet. God made my mission and my purpose clear. And my mission and my purpose is to do whatever and play whatever role that I have to play into saving the black race. Do whatever and play whatever role that I have to play into saving the black race, number one. And number two, to making sure that everybody of all colors, all backgrounds, all creeds, all nationalities, all get this. We all get the same 24 hours. Not just one race, not just another race, not just one gender, not another. We all get the same 24 hours. But I'm fighting this fight. And to other people, it's an impossible dream. It's not impossible. It's going to happen. We're going to make progress and change the world. But I can't do it alone. And I know there's people that feel just like me that are out there, that are talented, that's probably working for Google or Nike or working for bigger corporations that have a track record and have an experience at the level that I'm playing at. I'm not coming to just compete. I'm coming to win. I'm going to fucking buy Disney for us. Okay. If Trump 
gets elected, I, I really do believe in my heart there'll be a race war. That's why this message is not just to black people, you know what I'm saying? This message is to, to, to everybody. You know, this man is really trying to turn us against each other and put us in a situation. America messed up. Like, when I look at the videos of, like, you know, um, Malcolm Martin, Stokely, you know what I'm saying? I wish I could have seen a black man, black man conversation. I couldn't have talked to nobody about what we want to talk about but you. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's a testament to your journalism. Man, you're, you're an inspiration I, to I, me, I bro. I want to see where you at. I want to yeah. see where you at. You know, you sparked a, a crazy conversation uh -huh. when you told everybody to hold their vote. Yeah. All right, so you guys just saw that snippet. So this, that is why I wrote that. It's not about her being Asian. It's not even about them necessarily having a biracial baby. My issue is I, I think a lot of black women are to the point where they're tired of celebrity black men, especially men in power, who talk all this pro-black, black family, generational wealth, you know, black power, black empowerment, black building nonsense. But then they seem to always find themselves in a situation where they're not necessarily creating black families. OK, now y'all can say, well, his other kids are black. But let's keep it real. His other kids are multiracial. Justin's mother is Jamaican and Chinese, Misa. Uh, Kim Porter, even though she's brown skin, her mother was mixed. Her dad was black. Um, Chance, his other daughter that he had with, along with the twins, I think they're like a year or so apart. Her mother is biracial. She has a white father, black mother. So let's not act like Diddy has a history of just, you know, having children with full black women. So my thing is, I can even give him grace with the other kids because he was younger. You know, he was younger back then. And sometimes it takes a while for people to come into their wokeness. So this is nothing against, you know, his children or any of that. But my thing is, he's been talking pro-black for the past three, four years now and been acting like he's really serious about it. And so... It's very interesting, and I was saying this from Jump, that I felt like his whole relationship with Carisha was fake. It was just something to pacify a lot of black women. Uh, there were so many black women that were so gassed up with the fact that Carisha and Diddy were together. They were living vicariously through her. Yes, yeah, sis, and she came up, and she got Diddy, and she's living her best life. For me, I didn't care about them being together one way or another. I felt like, you know what, as long as everybody's grown and she knows what it is, cool. You know what I'm saying? As long as she realizes that, you know, it's a sexual relationship, you know, he may look out for her, you know, buy her bags. Uh, he said on The Breakfast Club he wasn't buying no cars. Um, but, you know, he's looked out for her in other ways. And as long as she's cool with that, cool. But then Carisha was just acting a little bit too, quote unquote, pick me-ish. During the BET Awards, she got a lot of flack because she was standing up there with this sign, you know, professing her love to Diddy. Meanwhile, Diddy's on stage and has not made mention of her one time. He's easy looking like, is this girl serious for me? <laughs> and what's very interesting is that this was back in June, so clearly old girl was already pregnant. So the Asian baby mama is at home with her feet up resting while you're on BT holding up signs. On top of that, I feel like he got with her to try and get black women on board to support the new show because Carisha Please is on Revolt TV. So if I can mess with this young black girl who is a part of the culture, you know, people like Carisha, she's funny and I can be seen with her and I can use her youth and her energy and her fan base and, you know, all this stuff. It will bring more people to watch this show, bring more people to support Revolt TV. I don't feel like their relationship was ever really that genuine. It was a relationship of convenience. He got something out of it, which is, you know, her youth in the hip hop business, her youth in music, her fans. And then she got something off of it because it elevated her status from just being a city girl to being one of Diddy's girls. Now, what was very interesting is that today her and DJ academics got into it and she was really, really upset. So I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys the back and forth that they had. So DJ academics says Diddy different. My nigga done fucked around and had a side baby on his harem of side chicks. Brother love is a real one. Now that's what DJ academics wrote. I don't recall him adding young Miami. 
But young Miami decided to jump into the fray. So she says, academics, my name ain't Dick, so keep it out your mouth. You the type of nigga my uncle doing life sentences for, bitch ass nigga. Wow. Then she says, I'm nobody's side bitch. Let's make that clear on this good Monday. And I don't come second to no bitch. Mm, okay. So DJ Academics replies back and says this. Misdirected anger. Brother Love would not approve of this behavior. I ain't that one that had a side baby on y'all. Relax. Then he says, young Miami mad at me for pointing out the obvious. You said you and that nigga go together real bad. That nigga had another baby with another woman. You the side chick. Don't get mad now. At least you got hella gifts. Live your life, queen. Also, don't tell us your business, LOL. Because, of course, we're going to comment. Then she says, you sit your fat, scary ass in the house all day talking online. Come outside, police booty boy. Then she says, bitches be like, I can never... I can bitch and that's the difference. Then she says Diddy won't even look at half of y'all bitches way. Majority of y'all praying upon a fallen star bitch please. Then she says and I'm not mad I'm trending. Then DJ Academic says Nick Cannon's women would never have a mental breakdown the day he announces a new baby. I'm just saying straighten up y'all be knowing what y'all sign up for. Then he's then young Miami says, who's having a mental breakdown who? And then she says, who's having a mental breakdown? You talking on me, punk. Then he says, I'm not trying to argue with you. I'm praying for your healing. Cause right now you sound like someone who found out the news via TMZ, just like everybody else. I'll send my prayers. Love you, hun. Then Miami says, I'm trying to figure out when I was mad or having a mental breakdown. Bitch, I'm in la-la land with my feet up, smelling my flowers. Y'all mad. You the one screaming at your porch, calling me out my name, punk. Then Academic says, Brother Love must have left, left Young Miami questioning him on red. Because she got all this time to be on Twitter mad because I called her a side chick. Then she replies back and says, It's cool for a man to constantly harass me online that I don't know. He did the same shit when my car got shot up and he laughed when I almost lost my life. Find somebody else to play with. I can react how the fuck I want to. So that was their back and forth. So this is what I wrote on my Instagram page. I said, sorry, ma'am. We deal in reality around here. You were a side chick. You were one of many. And you made yourself look goofy at the BET Awards. While you were holding pick me signs, his new Asian baby mama was at home resting her feet and enjoying her come up. If they had an understanding that it was just sexual and she got some coins from him, then she wouldn't care be pressed about her position. She's definitely salty because that facade about her coming up off of Diddy has shattered. He never took her seriously. He took her sexually. Folks need to learn the difference, but go off, sis. So that was my response to the whole back and forth. And I think that's the issue is that you have women thinking that they're coming up and they're going to be the one or he's going to settle down. And that's not the case. It's a sexual situation. And the whole time he was messing with her, he was messing with other people. If she didn't care and she wasn't a side chick, explain to me why a few months ago she was going back with another Asian woman named Dina Hunt. Remember, she was an OnlyFans model that Diddy um, was seen kissing and Carisha got really mad in her feelings. So, again, if it's just, you know, sex and you're getting money and he's looking out for you, why do you care if he's kissing on somebody else? OK, then on, so they went back and forth for a while. And then remember, a few months ago, there was another Asian girl. Diddy was doing a live stream with his mother and they were talking about Mace. And he accidentally turned the camera the wrong way. And we see another Asian woman. She looks Asian. Um, her name was Jessie May. So that went viral because everybody was like, okay, I thought, you know, Carisha was the main. Who's this chick? And she's literally running to get out the way. Check this out. Uh, <laughs> oh, Christian trying to join her. Let, let Christian in. Let Christian got hit. Oh, what the fuck are you doing? Oh. Okay. All right, so you guys just saw that. On top of this, when Diddy and Carisha first started messing around, now remember, she's I'm no side chick, I'm main, and this and that. 
Remember when it came out that Joey Chavez, who is Bow Wow's baby's mother and Future's baby's mother, she was making out with Diddy. What happened? Carisha unfollowed her. And they were kind of low-key throwing shots at each other. So, you know, at the end of the day, she needs to stop acting like she's so unbothered. She was definitely bothered throughout this situation because that's what it was. It wasn't a relationship. It was a situation She was definitely trying to be the main one because if she wasn't trying to be, she wouldn't have gave a damn about Joey. She wouldn't have gave a damn about Dina, uh, Jesse, or any of these other women that Diddy was messing with if they truly had an understanding. Now, remember a month ago, they were all at Diddy's birthday party and Carisha got him a necklace. Uh, Krishan was there. And, you know, they were looking like a straight up couple. Diddy even kissed her. Then literally not even two weeks after that, Carisha went online and she deleted every picture of her and Diddy. She not only deleted every picture of Diddy, she also unfollowed him. And then she wrote a few things on her Instagram story where she says four words. When I think about them, it's crusty, musty, dusty, and rusty. Then she says, bring on the mother effing problems. And then she posted a picture of herself and she says, I don't care who he fuck with, bitch. I can't be fucked with. And we haven't really seen them together acknowledging each other since then. So I think the reason why Diddy is coming out now about the baby, because the news was going to come out anyways, either somebody found out or maybe Young Miami was going to spill the tea, because I'm sure she probably knew that he had a kid on the way. Or maybe when she found out, that's when she unfollowed him and, you know, broke up with him, quote unquote, even though they weren't in a relationship because that was, you know, embarrassing because everybody's acting like they were really boyfriend and girlfriend. And I kept telling y'all from day one, this is a sexual situation. I don't know why y'all keep looking at this as some type of relationship goals. She is one of his many. And for her to not act like she wasn't a side chick and she doesn't come second to no bitch, you need to live in reality. You were one of his many side chicks. You definitely came second because he got somebody else pregnant and he has a baby with them. And, and I find that very interesting. And I'm, and I'm not saying that she needed to have a kid with Diddy or anything like that. But I find it very interesting that as old as Diddy is, and as much as he's been talking about black empowerment, he allowed himself to get caught up with a woman of another race. Now, when I look at men with power, let's take Elon Musk, for example, because he's definitely a male whore. Elon Musk has 10 children by, you know, I don't know how many different women, but several different women. When you look at his kids, please find me the half black child. Please find me a biracial child that Elon Musk has. You won't find any. All of his children are white because he understands even if he's going to be a whore, he's going to leave his wealth to his race. Okay. On top of that, we have the Diddy. On top of that, we have Diddy who, again, like I said, when he was younger, that's one thing. But now you're more woke. Now you're talking all this black empowerment. So for him to be caught up having a child with an Asian woman, knowing that that money will be left to the Asian community, because these are the things that they talk about. It's very interesting. On top of that, we have the whole Nick Cannon situation where literally out of all his baby's mothers, he has one that's even full black. Now, Again, when people have money and they have power, they understand when they leave that money and it goes to the next generation, who that money goes back to, okay? Umar Johnson was even saying this on The Breakfast Club. So I just feel like Diddy used Miami just like Miami was using him, you know, fair trade ain't no robbery, but he was definitely using her and her persona and her personality to basically get black women back on board with him, to support him, to look at him differently. Because again, if he had no shame and he wasn't trying to use her to, you know, pacify some black women, because I wasn't impressed by any of this mess, he would not have any problem acknowledging this whole situation, acknowledging that he had a baby on the way. He wouldn't have to hide this woman. He'd have been, you know, showing her proudly just the same way he was walking around with young Miami proudly. How come all the, the women that he's dating of other races, they're jumping off camera to hide and not be seen. He's gone out his way to try and hide the Asian women that he's been, you know, messing with on the side. But he had no problem parading young Miami around. And I feel like he was parading her around for, you know, the aesthetics. Because of how it looked like, oh, you know, he's so pro-black. He got a young black woman on his arm and this and that. So 
again, that was the point of my post for y'all and y'all's feelings. It has nothing to do per se with him being with a woman of another race and having a biracial child. My issue is I'm tired of people talking pro-black and then moving a different way. If he wasn't talking all this pro-black generational mushmouth shit, there I wouldn't hold him accountable. But my thing is when you've been talking all this for the past three years, well, yeah, people have the right to be kind of shocked. You know, it's just, it's strange because you don't see that with other men of power and influence. Most of them, if they're going to be having kids still and side chicks, those kids are from their ethnicity. They're from their race. So when people point that out, how are y'all mad? Because people are pointing out the truth. This man has been on some pro-black stuff for the past three years. So for him to pop out with a child that's not full black, people have the right to give him the side eye. So, so if you're upset, like I said, I'm following and keep it pushing. But I'm not about to sugarcoat something because you don't want to face the reality, you know, of what it is. But, um, yeah, I don't think DJ Academics was wrong at all. He didn't at her. He didn't say her name. You know, she got upset about it. But the truth is the truth. And they were using each other. She was not a main chick. She, she was a side chick, just like everybody else. She held the same position. And, again, if she didn't care and she knew her position and she was cool with it, she wouldn't have been beefing with so many of these women. And another thing I find problematic is when people like Young Miami – use situations like this to talk down to other black women and say things like, oh, y'all are just jealous. Oh, y'all yeah. wish upon a fallen star that y'all could be in this situation. Diddy would never look at women like you. Um, young Miami, you was having a baby in 2019 and telling the world that you got to have Chinese in you because of how your baby came out looking and social media drug the hell out of you. So please stop acting like you've always lived a soft life or like you come from that background or this, you know, certain type of pedigree to even be in spaces with Diddy. You lucked up. That doesn't make you better or worse than anybody. You lucked up. You got into certain spaces. Good for you. But then don't turn around and then talk to other black women and talk down to black women and talk down on their looks and say that they couldn't be in those same spaces. If you were able to luck up in less than three years and get into the same space with Diddy, I think other black women can see themselves in those same spaces as well. OK, because like I said, you know. Two, three years ago, you weren't in those spaces. So let, let's not act all the way brand new because, again, two, three years ago, she was out here screaming that she must have Asian in her. You can't make this shit up. Anyways, y'all, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire messy-ass situation, honey. How do y'all feel about this? How do you feel about Diddy? I'm announcing the birth of his daughter. How do you guys feel about Young Miami and DJ Academics going back and forth? Do you feel like she is pressed and bothered because she knows that, you know, uh, you know, Diddy has moved on and he has chosen to, you know, be with somebody else and procreate with somebody else. And maybe she feels like she was used because um, I, I just don't see why she would go back and forth with him that long. But let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Hit the subscribe button. Feel free to share the video. Let me know your thoughts. I will talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.